in development debates, we take a look at the issues shaping the future and present of China. Today, we'll see what experts have to say about foreign direct investment coming into China. Foreign direct investment, or FDI, is a very important part of increasing a country's GDP, especially for a country looking to make rapid strides in development. Typically, a country will need the expertise and capital of other countries to improve industries. A high level of interest, talent, stability, and capital are required to set up an environment that's appealing to foreign investors. Countries that become war-torn or that have a bad history of protecting private investors, especially foreign ones, will have trouble attracting good FDI figures. An investor will have to look at the country as a place that can safely increase the value of an investment more so than in the home country. China is a valuable country for FDI because of its large and highly controlled population. It was initially an industry-exclusive area for building factories. This eventually opened doors to multinational corporations that were looking to reach Chinese consumers and employ them in other sectors. Inward FDI in China saw large increases in the early 2000s, where it was made up of several different avenues for investment. They included joint ventures, cooperative investments, and solely foreign-owned enterprises. The foreign-owned enterprises were illegal until a policy change in 2001. Arthur D. Little is a strategic consulting firm that says that people should look to invest in China right now. They said, quote, Since China implemented reforms and opened to the outside world 34 years ago, foreign direct investments of Western companies have played a pivotal role in China's phenomenal economic growth. However, most of them still face enormous challenges in their home markets a result of the latest crisis. The consulting firm also noted that those who read up on China will be able to see that there have been problems with the slowing pace of the Chinese economy. The key points they mentioned were the rising labor costs and the emergence of new markets, which could threaten China's role as the world's factory. But they also pointed out that, quote, companies are still confident about China's future and the continuation of its positive development. Changes do not inevitably mean a threat, but on the contrary can be a starting point for new business opportunities and enhance future perspectives. The Guardian's Emma Wall in March 2013 also spoke of the risk in the market. She defined them as, quote, There are other dangers. Many of the largest companies are state-owned enterprises, meaning that even though it's possible for foreign investors to own a stake, shareholders may find themselves relegated to second priority behind the government. Corporate governance is also a problem in China. Company accounts are often incomplete or incorrect. Fidelity China fund manager Anthony Bolton fell foul of fraud in 2011, investing cash into the wrong companies. The manager has altered his approach so as not to fall victim again. Some multinational companies have taken a detailed look into many possible ways for foreign companies to break into China. Major financial companies are interested in getting a hold of capital from the cash-heavy country and are already aware of it's difficult to get out. KPMG, a financial services company, published a report recently on what observed in the first quarter of 2013 for FDI figures. They said, quote, In the first quarter of 2013, we observed that FDI in China has ended its 15-month streak of either flat or negative growth, with two months of substantial growth. This growth was supported by a rise in both the manufacturing and services industry. In 2013 and beyond, the service industry is expected to continue its growth. Many service industries, such as healthcare, high technology, and consumer goods and services, are receiving support from the central government to expand, and results can be witnessed in the form of greenfield or M&A transactions in e-commerce, consumer goods, internet services, and healthcare products and devices. These consulting and financial service companies have been very interested in getting access to the capital of China's super wealthy. They've also tried to break in as facilitators for technology companies that want to bring their tech into the fast urbanizing country. Many policy regulators and state control issues have made FDI a large challenge for multinational and small companies. The companies that have done best are those that have been able to work with Chinese companies and find reliable partners. Finding stable and trustworthy partners has enabled foreign products and companies like Starbucks Coffee and BMW Cars to become household names throughout China. Future FDI would involve more open policies that are bringing in a diversified number of industries in the country. Diversification might be important to the country as long as it's so heavily focused on real estate and manufacturing. Other countries in Southeast Asia have shown to be possible competitors with China's role as a manufacturer, so a more open approach to FDI might be a wise idea.